Paddington Bear, the beloved creation of author Michael Bond, has just been issued a British passport. And I had to wonder about the legal complexities around his case and how he would have been given citizenship. But since I'm an immigrant myself, I only have a low to moderate understanding of these issues. But luckily, I know someone who lives right down the road from me who is a lawyer and then went on to become an immigration judge. And today I'm joined by my neighbor, Norman, who's going to answer some questions about the curious case of Paddington Bear. Welcome, Norman. Thank you very much. So I wanted to go over the facts of the case that are presented in the first book, which is called A Bear Called Paddington. So a small bear was once discovered by the Brown family at Paddington Station in London. He's wearing a hat and a coat, and on his coat is pinned a label that says, please look after this bear. Oh, and thank you. It's a polite (laughs) note. The Browns ask him if he needs help, and then he immediately makes a confession, which is, quote, I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. I emigrated, you know. I used to live with my Aunt Lucy in Peru, but she had to go into a home for retired bears. And so they're very surprised that this young bear has come all by himself. And um, he explains, yes, he stowed away in the lifeboat. He's been eating marmalade, and he presents the evidence of this, which is a nearly empty jar of marmalade. And his Aunt Lucy always intended for him to do this, which is why she taught him to speak such good English. Mm. So here's a key quote that I would like your opinion on. It all seems highly irregular, said Mr. Brown, doubtfully. I'm sure there's a law about it. Well, yes, there is. I mean, the the important thing is to to start with, he's been granted a passport now. So how do you get one? Well, the answer is um, you've got to be a British citizen, which he clearly isn't. Uh, I mean, that's the basics. Uh, There are other criteria too. but um, Or he can be naturalised, a naturalised British citizen. Uh, having settled in the UK, well, uh, a passport is available if you've got British nationality and British citizens either are those born in the UK or their parents are born in the UK. So obviously that doesn't apply to Paddington uh, at all. As far as naturalisation is concerned, well, if you've been settled here for uh, five years, you can apply for citizenship. Well, uh, the book was first published in 1958, which would yeah. make Paddington Bear 66 years old. Yeah, well, now, yes. So he's been settled for more than five years, okay. no question. But as far as I know, he's, he hasn't actually applied himself to, mm. to be settled. Okay. And if you are settled and apply to remain, then 12 months after that, you can apply for a, a passport. However, you got to remember, this was an illegal entry. He's an illegal immigrant. And um, mm. that would count against him, as well as the probable fact that he's illegally imported foodstuffs from abroad against the regulations because he was found with marmalade sandwiches. No, it's true, but does it count that the marmalade was for personal use and it wasn't for commercial sale? Possibly. It depends on the uh, the, the regulations of the time in 1958. Um, mm. I'm afraid I'm... I can't remember those. A little bit before your time. <laughs> before, or well before my time, well before my time. So naturalisation, citizenship, uh, immigration is basically out of the question because as far as I remember, uh, Paddington was adopted by the Browns. Is that not right? He was. It's very clear in several of the books when people refer to him as a pet, the Browns become very upset about that and they say, absolutely not. He's a member of the family. But, you know, I wonder what's his legal status, though, because he is, as the Home Office noted on his passport, he is a bear and not a human. So how does that factor in Well, the thing is, he was adopted. Okay. And to be formally adopted, he would have to go to court, or the Browns would have to take the issue to court and get him formally adopted. Now, as I Mm. recall, he is now officially Paddington Brown. He is Paddington Brown. That's the name that's on his passport. Although he was uh, a stowaway from darkest Peru and although his Aunt Lucy sent him here deliberately, taught him English in order to help him uh, survive in the UK, the fact is that despite the illegal entry, despite the possible importation of illegal foodstuffs, the court would have considered all of those things and all the other factors uh, in the case, how good he is, how, how long he's been here, what the Browns say about him, how they look after him, how they live, and the all of that would be considered, and clearly my view would be that the judge in the adoption court would have said the good stuff outweighs the bad and granted him adoption mm. to the Browns. Once he's adopted, 
he's in, he becomes British in effect, and he's entitled to a passport. Well, and I think there is one thing about Paddington Bear that's very strongly in his favor in terms of his integration. I mean, for, well, first of all, he does speak impeccable English. That's very, very clear in all the books. His grammar well, is perfect. He's also voiced by actor Ben Wishaw, who has a lovely voice, impeccable delivery, excellent diction. But I think the thing that most indicates his ability to be integrated in British culture is that he gives very hard stares to people when they forget their manners. Yes, I've read that. And I, I feel that that's an excellent sign of integration into British life. Well, the fact that he can speak such good English and he's lived here for so long and he hasn't been in trouble, that's the other thing. He's not been it. Yes, he's been in a Little few scrapes. Little bits of trouble. But he always comes out smiling and he always comes out well, uh, as far as I recall. So no doubt the, the judge decided everything is in his favour, we'll grant him an adoption and therefore he gets a passport. And don't forget... It's always possible that the judge actually liked marmalade sandwiches mm. because the invention of the marmalade sandwich is probably another big bonus to allow him to get uh, adopted. No, that's true. I mean, and marmalade sandwiches have become so embraced in this country that I remember in that little video that they did with the Queen and Paddington yes. meeting, she in fact had marmalade sandwiches in her handbag. She did. I mean, if that's not an endorsement of what Paddington brings to this country, I don't know I, what else is. I think that will have weighed very heavily in his favor. Oh, well, maybe that was the uh, yeah. endorsement, the final seal on his application. I think, I think uh, if uh, he was good enough for the royal family, for the Queen... He's good enough for the country. Excellent. Well, that settles that. Well, thank you very much for clarifying these weighty legal My matters pleasure. for me, Norman. My pleasure. Okay, and if we have any more legal issues that affect children's book characters in the future, would you come in and give your expertise? Yes. Thank you very no much. No extra charge. Oh, well, a lawyer who doesn't charge, who can ask for more? <laughs> thank you.